Hey Health Junkies, it's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hello, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Kraus, and today is a day where I'm going to expose all of my dirty little secrets about why I might be overweight and perhaps why you might be as well. So this is a follow-up to my interview of my last podcast with Jay Kim because Ever since I knew that I was going to be interviewing Jay, I started to work on getting my macros, so my carbohydrate, protein, and fat dialed in and trying to figure out exactly what workouts were best for me and kind of dabbling with it a little bit. But I found that there's really seven reasons that that come to mind when I look at myself and I look at my patients in terms of what went awry. Because if you look at it here, obviously calories in, calories out, are huge. And I do think that they should be tracked, as I mentioned in the last podcast. But in this case, I also note that, well, we have a ton of healthcare professionals out there who are overweight, some grossly overweight compared to the average. And it's not for a lack of knowledge. We have some serious metabolic issues going on. We have some serious Franken food here in the United States and you know across the world for that matter. But we have some other issues that are contributing to our weight problems. And one of the big things that I wanted to follow up Jay's interview with is that I see a lot of folks when they are struggling with their weight and they're going, what the heck is it? I've tried every diet, this, that, and the other. And I wanted to follow up my interview because yes, I agree with Jay 100% on everything he says. And, and I think that's huge. I think the other thing to take into account that I didn't mention in the interview with Jay is that we have a lot of folks with gut issues, with metabolism issues, and food relationship issues. And, and so I'm going to go in that to that today. In particular, also genetics, I've mentioned that before on the podcast, and routine changes. And that's where I tend to see some of the biggest issues in myself, and I'm going to get to that in a little bit. So one of the big things, of course, that that I have to mention in terms of these seven reasons, number one, like I said, be, just at the beginning of this podcast is if you're overweight, chances are it's due to a combination of factors. And, and when I say overweight, you could be 10, 15 pounds overweight. You could be 100 pounds overweight. The combination of factors might be something causing you to eat too much, so driving you to eat more because of few podcasts ago, I was talking about us being overfed and undernourished. And that's a huge key component because if our bodies think we're starving, so we're not absorbing our nutrients or we're not getting the right nutrients in, we're going to messages keep going to the brain that say, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. And and it's, it's hard. There's no amount of willpower or counting calories. You're going to want to pull your hair out. And so these are the things that I like to take Jay's information and take it to the next level. So the other big thing here is, is gut issues. So I've talked about it a lot in my podcast, leaky gut in particular. So where food molecules are getting across into the bloodstream and causing inflammation. We have issues with not being able to absorb foods. We have food sensitivities and whether you believe in food sensitivities or not, my point to you is that a lot of us eat the same thing over and over and over again. We are creatures of habit. The last time I looked at data on this, it was like Americans have 14 foods, so meals basically, that we rotate back and forth. And if that's you, if you have, are on autopilot at the grocery store and you're like, yep, this week I'm going to get my celery, my carrots, my this, my that, and, and you do that every week, you're just giving your, your body the same thing over and over again and get sick of that. And it will develop an, an irritation from that. And the more processed your foods are, the worse it gets. Now, the other big thing that I just mentioned a second ago is metabolism issues. We've got metabolism slowing as we age, but we also have a big issue with mitochondria. So these are your little workhorses and every single one of your cells, these are what make energy for you. And a lot of folks have issues even getting their carbohydrates into their cell. Or someone might be able to get the carbohydrate into the cell and then it can't go through the cycle to make energy. 
And so I'm geeking out a little bit here. This is this is the Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle, if anyone ever studied biology or was bored by it probably back in high school at this point. But what it is is literally how we make energy. And as you get older, you don't need as much molecules for energy as you did when you were 14. And so that's another big issue because there's a lot of us eating what we would have consumed when we were 18 years old and now we're 35 or more. And that's another problem. And so our metabolism changes. We have different needs. Also, we're all like cars. We get older as, you know, think about your car. You got to change the tires. You got to change the radiator fluid. You got to, you know, do a good radiator flush. Well, same thing with us. We need to change over things and, and improve function. So we need tune-ups. And and metabolism issues come from lack of, of tune-up. And in particular, mineral and vitamin deficiencies. Magnesium is a freaking huge one. A lot of us are magnesium deficient. We're like basically brainwashed that we all need calcium thanks to the dairy council and the three servings of dairy a day. But honestly, most of us are not even lacking calcium. We're good on that. It's the magnesium. And magnesium helps us to not have something called insulin resistance. This means it, it basically helps us to not have issues taking carbohydrates in, so glucose in particular, and using this fuel. Because a lot of folks out there who are termed diabetic, technically it's not that they're really diabetic, it's that their body got so freaking sick of seeing glucose because their blood sugar was up probably because of stress, but also blood sugar up because they were eating too many processed carbohydrates. The body gets sick of taking in those carbs and it goes, yeah, yeah, whatever. I've seen this glucose business before. We're just going to let it sit in the bloodstream and then store it as fat later. And then the other side of that, which I'm starting to see, is folks will get glucose into the cell, but then the glucose can't get into the Krebs cycle, the cycle that makes energy for you. So then that glucose sitting in your cell, well, what happens to that? It gets stored as fat. And so that's why we've got a lot of people with, with issues with being overweight, because if your body thinks it's not getting carbohydrates in, and you're not making energy efficiently, you're going to get a mas- message to your brain that's like, feed me, feed me, feed me. And your brain's going to say, carbs carbs, carbs. It might say salty. It might say sweet carbs. You pick your poison, but your brain's going to be on like repeat on that because it's basically thinking you're not getting stuff in. And so how the heck can you control your, your intake? Because if you're not tracking it and you're not mindful of what's going in, chances are you will be eating probably two to three times what you should in the amount of calories and two to three times what you think you're eating. I don't know how many times I have ladies come in my office and they're like, I barely eat anything. I don't eat at all and I'm not losing weight. And then we track what they're eating and they're like, holy cow. Um, Oops. Yeah, I constantly am munching all day. I didn't even realize what I'm putting in my mouth. So big issue there, which leads me into another issue that a lot of us have, food relationship issues. As a naturopath, I feel like I've caused some of these issues with folks because of the whole avoidance of gluten, the avoidance of dairy, the avoidance of A's, the avoidance in XYZ to help certain conditions to the point where I do have some people that they're almost afraid to eat. And I kind of feel like a jerk because that's never what I intended to cause ever. And I actually feel like I caused that a little bit in myself over the years. But we do need to address our food relationships because a lot of us come into this world with family members that also have food relationship issues, and then it starts to become a problem. I'm going to give you a little bit of, let's say, expose on myself. I have a huge food relationship issue. I have since I was a kid. I grew up in a family where my grandma was my primary caregiver when I was little because my mom was working pretty hard, and food was love for my grandma. When she was having a crappy day, she would go make pierogies. She she was Polish. So it was pierogies. It was all kinds of different cookies. And oh my goodness, I mean, carb-dense stuff here. And then, of course, if I didn't feel good or I had a crappy day, guess what? I would go and make foods with her and and we'd just sit there and eat. And, And so food has been my friend for a very, very long time. And oftentimes when I'm bored, when I'm sad, when I'm happy, I mean, it's food. That's what you think about. And sometimes you become so obsessed about what you're going to eat next, you t- it takes over your whole life. And I'll be honest, that has happened to me. And and in particular, I've I've messed with my my brain in many ways and manipulated my brain in many ways around food. For example, 
in high school and even I'll even admit into my 20s, I think I'm over it now, but when I was in high school and into my 20s, I would exercise two, I would do two, two a days, three a days just to burn enough calories in my head so that I could eat more. <laughs> Seems really stupid. It is stupid. And, and if anyone is out there literally getting on a treadmill and going, sweet, I burned 500 calories, I can have 500 extra calories tonight, I can have two more pieces of X, Y, and Z, it, it doesn't work. Because I was basically looking at elliptical and cardio calories. Those calorie things are a joke. Don't even pay attention to those. Pay attention to the time you're on those machines. And if you're only solely doing cardio, it's not going to get you anywhere in terms of full-on substantial metabolic weight loss where you're you're going to look good and feel good about your body. And that's and that's honest to goodness truth. I mean, I know some people might balk at that, but you got to have some weightlifting involved. And I don't mean you have to be a CrossFitter and you don't have to be a power lifter or Olympic lifter, but you got to have some weight. Like you got to put some weight on there and, and lift some weight because we are all these machines that that's not normal. I mean, even if you carry buckets around at your house, like something that you would do as a caveman. Okay. Caveman didn't have buckets, but you could imagine what I'm trying to say. Get out in your backyard and move rocks around. Just build walls. Just kidding. Um, anyway, you've got to get some weight going on. And luckily enough, we have gyms and things of that nature. But I have had people carry around five-gallon um, buckets. I have had people carry around uh, gallon containers of milk and things of that nature just to get some weight and functional exercise. That's where I was going with this, functional exercise. So point being here is we'll do these mind tricks where we're like, oh, I can – like work out ridiculous today and you know you get done so say you go for a big hike that's probably one of the best ones here that I love to hear from people I went for a 10 mile hike today I'm totally gonna go have a bunch of beer and pizza well yeah you deserved it yeah you're rewarding yourself but you're putting all those calories right back in and if not more chances are same thing with trail mix and hiking trail mix is delicious I will tell you all about my obsession with nuts in a minute. But trail mix is delicious. It has a lot of calories. And a lot of people think they need to eat trail mix the whole time they're hiking. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And then you end up with triple the amount of calories that you just burned. Oopsie. Well, that happens. So one of the big things to think about is not getting into that brain trick where you're you're tying the amount of calories that you burn or, or guesstimating the amount of calories that you burn and then offsetting with food. Unfortunately, I mean, we learn at an early age to do that. I mean, gosh, I was in softball as a kiddo. And what did we do after softball games? We went to Dairy Queen. I mean, hello, that's what you do. Even if you lost, you still went. Everybody went. And so it's it's this food reward thing. And so looking at your food rewards, because I hear from a lot of patients, and, and I'm totally guilty myself, I'll be like, oh, everything was really great this week. I did really good. What's my reward? Oh, I can have a cookie or do this or that. It's crazy. We have these crazy mind tricks with with food. And, and a lot of times, I have a lot of people who are using the intermittent fasting for fasting and feasting. And that's another mind trick that I tried to do that. Like, oh, say on a Saturday, I ate way more on a Saturday night at dinner. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just not going to eat Sunday because that's intermittent fasting and I can I can make this work. Don't do these mind tricks to yourself. If you're going to do intermittent fasting, which I do recommend, do it right. Don't, don't get your brain in terms of I'm going to pig out and then I'm going to starve myself and then I'm going to pig out. It, be, it becomes really a mess. So speaking of eating your emotions, I just recently within the last year left a practice where I was a partnership and a partner in the, the, the practice. Our partnership kind of blew up and, and it is what it is. And <laughs> I ate my emotions. I, I really did. And and my emotions turned into my obsession for nuts. I told you I'd tell you about this. I absolutely love macadamia nuts. I love them so much that if I was stranded on an island and I could only bring one food, you better believe I'm going to be stuffing macadamia nuts into every pocket I can and take those suckers over there. And so I have a huge obsession with macadamia nuts, with pistachios, with cashews, with almonds, so now you see where this is going. And it doesn't matter. It could be nut butters. It could be nuts. And, well, what's the beauty of, of those? They're, they're low carb, right? Kind of. I mean, nuts have some carb. They're, they're high fat, though. So we've got this issue. And so I, at one point, about, oh, let's say two years ago, okay, maybe a little more, three, convinced myself that I was going to go keto 
And my idea of keto was just to eat nuts. And it was absolutely delicious, but I gained a lot of weight. And so unfortunately, I took a food that I loved and turned it into a soul diet plan. Has anyone done that before? Keto is probably one of the big ones. A lot of people are like, yes, cheese, cream cheese, all this good fat. Yeah, then your cholesterol gets a little wonky and things don't turn out so great when you try to stop the keto. Because what happens is when you create a habit, your body gets used to that particular type of food and it asks for it. And it'll keep asking for it. And then you'll find yourself trying to do keto, but yet you're sneaking in carbs. And uh, then the imbalance becomes a problem and then you start to gain weight. So basically here, I've now jumped to my next section of the seven reasons why I'm overweight is, is routine change. Our routines are issues for us. And, and by that, I mean some of us have a lack of routine. Some of us are dialed in on our routines. And some of us, when we change routines... So, for example, me, another expose here on myself, vacation. When I leave my regular dialed-in routine, I'm very dialed-in at home, but when I go on vacation, it's like caution to the wind, doesn't matter, there's no calories on vacation, blah, blah, blah. Don't know if any of you have that problem. But it's a routine change. Same thing with school season change. So I see this with a lot of moms. It's summer and the whole, you know, paying attention to what's going on with the kids and organizations out the window. And then we start to have issues with food. Also, we have a new, you know, new relationships, new marriage. Ever seen folks gain weight together when they get married? Yep. That's another biggie there. But something along the line of even an illness or even a stressful experience, things of that nature, when your routine changes, you're more likely to gain weight. And it's because we are creatures of habit. We are cavemen. We love routine. If we don't stick with our routine, we end up having, it's chaos. And so making a routine for your food and sticking with it, even while you're on vacation, and by this I don't mean, you know, you can't enjoy certain things while on vacation. It's keeping the mindset of, I need to keep some sense of routine because if your general routine with food is thrown off, then when you get home, it's chaos and it's hard to come back from it. So for example... Every year, my family and I, we go to the Cayman Islands, and it's wonderful. I love the Caymans, but what happens to me there is I don't usually eat breakfast because we've eaten dinner so late at night, I'm not hungry in the morning, so then I don't really eat until like one or two in the afternoon, usually right about time that I start to get out my lovely mojito, and now I'm eating with alcohol, usually not something I tend to do, and then by the time five, six o'clock rolls around, then it's like cheese and crackers hour, and then, you know, it's just this huge routine that we get into on vacation. Now, combine that with having stress, and the last year for me has been kind of stressful, and so I have had difficulties with balancing my blood sugar and my body has definitely responded in terms of salty carbs, salty carbs. So it's chips, it's popcorn, it's, I'm, I'm a salty carb kind of gal. And so yes, my macadamia nuts with their salty fat also play into that nicely. And so one of these things is that you combine those two issues and now you've got routine change on top of stress. It is a a recipe for nightmare for your weight because When you're stressed, a lot of times by the end of the day, you get home and you turn into a bear because you're basically like, I'm in my cave. All right, I can restore myself. And what am I going to do to restore? I'm going to eat. Yes, that's great. I'm so hungry. I don't have time to make food. What can I get my hand in and rip open as fast as I can? Does this happen to any of you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally whatever I can stick my hand in fast enough and start putting into my mouth happens. And then when you do that, you have no idea what you're eating. You have no idea because you're not tracking it because you're like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. So those kind of things, routine change, stress, food relationship issues, biggies here. And then we've got genetics. A lot of us have genetics that actually program us to overindulge in foods, to program us to snack, to program us to be obese, and also to program us to not know when we're full. That's kind of crazy. There's even some genetic markers that have us program basically saying that we're going to gain weight back pretty fast. 
And and that's pathway genomics. That's the testing that I use in my practice that shows this. And it's kind of crazy, but it's also cool to know because now you know what you're set up for. Because, I mean, look at look at Oprah. She's gone up and down in weight for years. I mean, she, she loses, she goes up, she loses, she goes back up. A lot of people are like that. You might even be like that. I am like that. And, and these are big things to keep in mind when you're trying to lose weight and, and trying to get the, the body that you always wanted. So I've given you all these different reasons of why you might not be losing weight. And you might be going like, oh my God, all right, so what do I do now? Do I, you know, do I jump on a paleo? Do I jump on a keto? Do I do this? Do, you, do I do that? Well, for some people, those particular quote diets work. And I'm not anti any of these. And in fact, if you come to my practice, sometimes I do recommend certain ones based on symptoms. Like if you have skin issues, if you have hives, you have acne, you have chronic inflammation in your joints. You know, yeah, the autoimmune paleo style of eating is actually really, really nice. It de-inflames the body. That is 100% true. I've seen it happen over and over and over again. I think the big thing that we're not doing with all of these different food plans is that we've got this mind trick going on. We're going, I'm going to do this food plan. Like, I don't know how many women come into my practice and they're like, okay, I'm going to do Whole30 and I'm going to lose so much weight. And it's like, yeah, you might lose some weight, but then what are you going to do after that Whole30? Or what are you going to do after a 30-day challenge? Or what are you going to do after a 21-day challenge with that one 21-day um, fixed diet? What, what's going to happen after that? And, and that's, that's what you need to be thinking about. So in my practice, I typically will start folks out on a particular food plan. Then we get their macros figured out. So we figure out how much they need in terms of protein, carbs, and fats. I also recommend labs because we want to know where your body's at. We want to know what your gut function is doing. We want to know about your metabolism. I've talked about something called the NutriEval by Genova a lot. That's one lab. You can do something called an oat lab, an organic acids testing lab. That is by Great Plains Lab. That'll give you a lot of good info in terms of your metabolism and what's happening food sensitivities. I do have people look at what's going on. Now, Alcat is one company that's like the Cadillac or the Rolls, no, it's way more than a Cadillac. That's like the Rolls Royce of of food sensitivity testing. But you can also do a Genova one. You can do a US Biotech. Those are all companies that test for food sensitivities to tell you, is there something that you are overeating that's irritating your gut? And then genetics, huge there. Genetics are huge, huge, huge. Because not does it indicate everything, but it tells you where you're at and what things you know you need to prevent in terms of risk factors. And so I'd like to take those three into account. Now, for my folks that have some serious digestive issues, I will also take into account a stool test as well, especially if we suspect celiac, if we suspect chronic inflammation in the gut, like a colitis type of picture. I think that's important to look at that, especially if you have chronic diarrhea. We got to figure out what is irritating that gut. So those are the things that I love to take into account. Now, the next thing is, is once we take those into account, then we adjust the protein, fat, and carbohydrates based on what's right for your body. Because autoimmune paleo and all of those, these are generalizations, and they don't typically recommend that you have to count calories. But unfortunately, I'll give you a little, another expose. Wow, I'm just like full of them today. On me, I did paleo for, gosh, probably four years, pretty strictly. And I had it in my head. I can eat as much protein as I want, and I can eat as much macadamia nuts as I want. And at first, when I wasn't eating any carbs at all, I, I really had it. I was I was almost keto. I think I was probably like 50 grams of carbs or less a day. When I was doing that, I had it in my head that I could have portions of protein however much I wanted to. I would eat a whole package of uh what is that called? Pepperoni stuff. I would eat the whole package of Applegate pepperoni. Um, and that's like 70 calories calories per like five slices, I think. But I mean, there's five servings in there. And I would do that in at lunch. And then like for dinner, I would do like two chicken breasts. That's a lot of protein. And protein does turn into carbohydrate, by the way, in case anyone's ever wondered about that. These extremely high protein plants are not always the best options. And while I lost weight and was looking good for a while, it did start to turn on me. And that's something to make to make a huge note of. And so if you are following a certain dietary plan, 
that's something to consider. The other big thing is, is that you get into this routine. So I'm back to routines again. You get into this routine of eating extra protein, extra fat. I mean, I used to eat, this sounds disgusting, but oh, it's so delicious too. I used to eat Kerrygold butter like it was candy. And for some of you out there who have done keto or done you know, paleo, that might sound amazing to you. And and it's the same thing with bulletproof coffee. You put the butter in there, you go to town. But honestly, I got into a habit of two to three tablespoons of butter a day. And I, when I finally got my genetic testing that I don't digest fats very well, that was a big eye opener. And also another reason that I was like, oh, huh, that's why I still can't get the the body I want. And (laughs) let me give you another expose into myself. I have been on a diet or trying to figure out a food plan for myself to get the body I wanted since I was 10. That's pretty sick. Um, But it's true. Even to this day, my father was just out here visiting me and he said, hey, you get that six pack yet? Because I've been talking about that since hmm, I, yeah, probably was 10. And I still struggle to get the body I want. I've had it on and off over the years and I lose it. And the reason I lose it is routine and getting lazy and not tracking my macros. That's hands down. And the other reason is my relationship with food. And so if you're sitting out there and you're going like, yeah, a lot of this sounds like me, probably number one thing in addition to doing all this math in terms of your macros and figuring out your gut function is to get your relationship with food right because it's hard. And and I currently work with folks to help me. And in particular, there's an amazing gal out there online, Alicia Miller, aliciamiller.com. It will be in the resources section of this podcast. She's awesome with helping folks to dial in what's going on in their brain around food. Because there's a lot of us that think we have yeast overgrowth. We have small intestine bowel overgrowth, so bacterial issues. We have colitis. We have this, that, and the other. But honestly, in the search for trying to find what's wrong with your gut, it really ends up sometimes going back to emotions. Your gut is your primary brain. Your brain's your second brain, hands down. So that being said, I'll talk about that on another podcast. But something to really think about is routine and dialing in what's going on with your metabolism, food sensitivities, genetics, or stool testing if you need it. And that routine related to your food relationship. So what is your relationship with your food? Because maintaining a healthy weight is is a lot of work. There's no freaking trick. There's a lot of hype out there. Like, oh, you don't need to track calories. You just follow keto. You do this, you do that. No, it's work. And, And that's why healthcare providers, that's why fitness gurus out there, sometimes we end up going up and down in weight. And it's because... It's work. And if you fall out of the routine, now we have some problems. So calories do matter. They really do. And like like Jay Kim was saying in the previous podcast, garbage in equals garbage out. Well, yeah, you don't want to be eating junk. But you find that what goes in does make a huge difference. And as you're eating healthier, you're going to want healthier foods because you can eat more healthier foods than processed foods in the long run. For example, I used to love cereal. It was like my favorite thing. I would eat a box of cereal a day because I knew that it was calculated that it was 1,200 calories in one box of cereal. And this was a habit of mine throughout high school. I did this for about three years in high school. And did I ever achieve the weight in the body that I ever wanted? Heck no, I didn't. It, It didn't work. But it was calculated calories. But it was crap food and I was starving and I was binging on weekends and eating whatever I wanted. But during the week, I ate my one box of honey bunches of oats or one box of honey nut Cheerios. Yeah, (laughs) you know, no protein, no fat, lots of carbs. And so you name it, I've kind of done it to myself in terms of testing the waters of what might work for my genetics. What I have found the best, though, and, and what works for pretty much everybody, and I say pretty much everybody because I've, I've seen quite a few patients in my 10 years of practice at this point, and really when we break it down, calories matter, movement matters, muscle mass matters. Do you hear that? Muscle mass matters. You cannot expect to maintain weight effectively if you don't build up some muscle mass. And I'm, like I'm saying, I'm not meaning that you have to go to CrossFit. I'm not saying you've got to get in the, li- the gym and do some power lifting. You've got to just work on building a little muscle mass, and you can do it walking. You can do it with walking with weights. I do highly, highly recommend weights though. So you got to get yourself a good trainer. Now, the other big thing, what do you, what do you do about your overweight issues? First of all, you've got to stop the excuses. 
I found early in my practice that I was being too nice on people. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm sorry that you had a whole bag of Cheetos. All right. And I was too accommodating. And I'm over that now. Um, same with myself. I, I want people to get results. And the excuses have to stop because, unfortunately, like I said before, there wouldn't be overweight doctors, nurses, nutritionists, for that matter, if we all had perfect relationships with food. I mean, I wouldn't be 20 pounds overweight right now sitting here talking to you if there wasn't an issue with food, relationships with food, and and tracking and getting out of your routine. And so you got to get down to down and dirty with it. A lot of people will tell me, but I love eating X, Y, and Z, and I love going to you know whatever restaurant on a Saturday night. Okay, fine. Just account for it. That's the thing that a lot of people don't get. It's not an all or nothing type of thing. I think a lot of people think, oh, if I went and had ice cream last night, boom, it's over, it's done, I'm done with my diet. I guess I'll start again on Monday. How many people have said that? On Monday, I'll start. On Monday, I'll start. And then how many Mondays later? So my biggest thing here is not to beat anybody up on it. It's just really to inspire you to be like, okay, it, tracking is uh, your food is easier than than you thought we have so many apps now it's incredible all you have to do is scan your food um if it has a label and enter it it takes a couple seconds it's amazing and, and it's not that hard to count and track your food i used to say oh i don't have enough time it's too hard for me because i make all my food on my own so i have to enter every single freaking ingredient in there yeah i do but hey in the long run those apps will remember what you eat on the regular basis. At first, it's a little work up front, and then it's good. It's not that much time. And think about it this way. How much time do you sit scrolling through your work, you're not your work, but your worthless emails? Like, you know, we all have it, that, that email account that we've had since we were maybe teenagers or so, or let's say 20s. Um, not to date myself, I did, there was an email when I was a teenager. But anyway, in your 20s, you, you had email, right? And you had that junk email that you send everything to, and once in a while you'll like peruse it. Yeah. How much time do you waste looking at that? What about Facebook? How much time do you waste cruising other people's Facebook sites? So spying on people. Yeah, I bet you could take some of that time and enter your food stuff in. And it all boils down to routine, 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 routine. I mean, my fitness pal is a great app. Fitbits, the Fitbit, by the way, I'm going to do a podcast on that because I actually ended up getting one. I, I didn't want one for a long time, but my medical assistant got me to do it for multiple reasons. I'm going to do a podcast on that. But get a Fitbit. There's a great tracking app through that. There's a lot of tracking apps, and, and it's not that hard. You just got to get a routine, make it a habit. It takes 21 days to make a habit. That's why there's the 21-day fix programs. So, all right. First off, though, you got to stop the excuses because I, I hear so many people say, I like big portions. How am I ever going to cut my calories? Okay, that's easy. Add veggies. Veggies do not have a lot of calories. Chances are you're not eating enough. Eat some more veggies. You can fill out your plate really, really well. Now, in terms of grazing, a lot of people say, well, I like to eat just kind of all day and graze. Well, that's good. Just measure it out. Know what you're eating. Because the grazers, so moms out there are big grazers. So your kiddo doesn't finish what other ever snack they had on the table. And so you go by and you finish it for them. A lot of new moms and even seasoned moms don't know really how much they're putting in their mouth and they underestimate it grossly because of grazing and cleaning up and eating after their little ones. It's a big, big deal. Now, another big, huge thing to take into account, I was talking about offsetting and balancing. So a lot of us will have our vices, right? Like I told you about my macadamia nuts. So the way I get around it and what I'm working on now, because obviously I knew I was going to interview Jay and I started to really look at myself and be like, oh my gosh, I haven't got myself back on track from when we went to the Cayman Islands a couple months ago. And so I didn't get back into tracking my food. I actually used to track my food neurotically. And now it's like, okay, I haven't done that. So since, you know, knowing I was talking to Jay, I've started to prep myself more and, and, and go into it. It's routine. I, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. It, it's, it takes time to get into that routine. I struggle myself. And I think a lot of people look at healthcare professionals and think we're all perfect. We are not perfect. And if anyone tells you they're perfect, they're lying. I'm just telling you right now, they're lying. I it's it, it, I struggle. But it's routine, 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 routine. If you get nothing else from this podcast, make yourself a freaking routine about eating 
and tracking your food, you will notice that things will change for you. And it's because you're aware, conscious eating, huge, huge, huge. Look at what you're putting in your mouth. Decide, you know, before you even get your hand in that bag, when you go on autopilot, be like, wait, nope, slow down. Because that's a big thing that I find with a lot of folks. They'll think about something they want to eat. And before they even like have a chance to like weigh it, to look at the portion, it's already in their mouth and they have no idea how much they ate. And spending a little time up front to know how much you're going to eat is huge, 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 huge. So I digress. I keep going off the topic. Going back to what to do about eating out. Offset for it. Plan for it. Don't plan in terms of, okay, I want pizza. I'm going to go run a freaking marathon, then eat a pizza. Yeah, that, that's great, but that's not sustainable. You have to offset. Anytime you're thinking about an average day, if you want something, like you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going you know, out to happy hour and I know they have delicious calamari, I don't know, something like that. And you're like, okay, I really want that and I want one mojito or one beer, great. Track it. Go like, okay, track it ahead of time. Put it into the tracker so that you know how to balance the rest of the day. It's all about balance. It's not a big deal. Balance and routine. And so that's huge. Now, the other big thing is if you are gluten-free, dairy-free, you might notice that you feel better not eating grains. I do. That's one of the things that I stick with. I do feel better not eating grains. And that's fine. There are plenty of other ways to get around it to get your macros in. And so your protein, fat, and your carb for those macros. So just keep that in in mind. Um, I think a a lot of people also, another excuse that that probably is one of the other number one ones I hear in my office is food prep takes too long. I don't want to put together food. Well, guess what? There's frozen veggies that are flash frozen. You get a lot more nutrition in those sometimes than what you get in the fresh stuff at the grocery store because... When you freeze the food, it locks in the the goodness. And so there's that. There's also cut up veggies that are in bags. I mean, we have amazing, yeah, you pay more, but we have amazing things that are already done for us. Cheat, it's okay. What about Blue Apron? What about Sun Basket? Those are, those are the meal delivery companies that are pretty darn decent. You already, yes, you have to cook them, but you get the ingredients all right there for you. Those are really great options. And you can dial in you know, your, your meals. The other big thing is meal plans. There's a ton of meal planning apps out there. Spend a couple bucks and you can get grocery lists. You can get everything set, sent right to you. Even the specific dietary plans like autoimmune paleo, there are companies that are specifically doling out meal plans. That's kind of cool. E-meals, that's another uh, app website kind of thing out there for it too. So something to keep in mind, but really, like I said before, it's routine. And it takes 21 days. You got to be patient with yourself. It really, truly does take three weeks to get yourself a new routine. And then after that, you won't find yourself kind of going down those nasty habit routes anymore. If you are a sugar aholic, this is something to hugely take into account. The reason that your body craves sugar can be twofold. One, you created a habit where every night, like your brain basically knows that you're going to get ice cream or cookies or whatever. And so it asks for it because it's used to that. Two, the other issue, and this could be a combination issue, is that your your body's actually starving. It's not getting enough glucose in. And so having that sugary sweet treat is like amazing to it because now it's, it's a huge hit of, of energy going into the system that it can work with. Now, the more you do it, the more we have issues with becoming insulin resistant and storing fat and things of that nature, but it's, it's a habit. It ultimately boils down to a habit. Same thing with chips and the saltier kind of treats, my nuts, it's habit. If I am off of the macadamia nuts and I haven't seen them for three weeks or more, I often don't even think about them as much. But as soon as I see them, it's like crack. And this is this is what happens to a lot of people. You don't have chocolate for a couple of weeks. You're kind of cool with not having chocolate. You get it and you're like, oh my God, I it's, it's, it's literally like crack. Sugar, carbs, they're, they're very similar to some drugs. I mean, I, I'm just it's the way it is. It's, it's an addiction. And a lot of us need to work on that food addiction a little bit more. And so I think the big component to take away from this podcast, if you get nothing else out of it, is routine. You're probably grossly overestimating the fa- amount of food that you eat. And if you're not and you can and you've tracked it and you're going, I only eat like 500 calories a day, okay, then we need to look at your metabolism. Something's up. 
perhaps your thyroid's slow, perhaps your hormones are off, perhaps you have something called adrenal fatigue, perhaps you have mitochondrial fatigue, so your little workhorses, your factories and every cell that make energy are pooped. These, these are big issues, and that's why I wanted to do this podcast to basically give you a little sense that no one is perfect in the food world. Even all these folks that look amazing and they have their pictures of themselves really chiseled, that's hard work. If you ask any of them, chances are they are dialing it in with knowing the details, the macros. They know what they've done for workouts. They know everything. It's a, it's like a big documented, I wouldn't say experiment, but big documented project. And I really think it's important to keep that on hand. However, if you have done that and you've tracked and you're not losing weight, then you've got to go back to what's going on with your metabolism, what is blocked because there's something off. The other big thing to think about is age. As we get older, we do not need as much food as we think we do. Our metabolisms aren't as spry and fast as we they were when we were in our teens and 20s. There's a huge change there. Unfortunately, our brains don't catch up to that. And so we think we can still eat the foods that we used to when we were kids and not have an impact. So for example, like bags of chips or, or a whole box of cereal. I can't do that. If I did that now, one, I would be really bloated and this might be TMI, <laughs> but I, I'm not going to feel good. But those types of things, those days of eating pizzas and not having any consequence, those are over and we have to actually accept that. I think that's probably the hardest thing. You've got to get your relationship right with your food. You got to be like, okay, I really don't need as much food as I think I do. And I'm going to be completely honest with you here. I have that problem and I'm working on it. I have to always remind myself, like, what am I eating? Okay, so I have it planned out. I put it out. I weigh it out and I put it out on my plate. Now, weighing, I'm doing that now again because I'm getting back into my routine. Because I'll be honest with you. You get off your routine, you forget the sizes of food. Your portion distortion in your brain gets thrown off real fast. But weighing your food out and putting it on the plate in proper portions gives you a really good sense of, okay, this is where I'm at and this is what I'm eating. And doing that before you even put a morsel in your mouth. Because the minute you put something in your mouth, you don't know what you just ate. And that's a big, big deal. So you've got to be conscious. You've got to really slow it down. Spend some time with what you're going to eat, how you're going to prepare it, and knowing all the details about your food. That way, when you've got it dialed in, you've got your routine, so you know what you're going to eat. You have a routine, like a meal plan. You have literally that food comes out, you put it out, you place it out, then you start eating. That's conscious eating. Now, the things with metabolism, the things with your relationship with food, that comes with time, but it can be done. And I'm putting some resources at the end of this podcast in terms of getting some help for making a better relationship with your food. Alicia Miller's one, also Martha Beck. She's a great gal to look at in terms of changing your mindset around food and stress and things of that nature. She's not specifically towards food per se, but her concepts are great. So I want you to look at this podcast as as a check-in and see if, okay, you don't have the body that you exactly want. Why is that? And you know, I kind of geared it towards overweight, but this could be the same with underweight because some of us who just can't seem to gain weight, there could be some metabolism stuff that's not been uncovered yet. There could be some food sensitivities. And so to get the body that you want, you've got to put the time in. You've got to track what you're eating. You've got to get a routine down. The routine is key, like clockwork. The more that routine works like clockwork, the better you're going to be with maintaining a healthy weight. And so I really hope that I've given you a sense of hope in that, or or hopefully not made you hopeless in that I struggle with it, but at least given you a sense that there are ways to look at your weight and getting the body you want. And there there are solutions. It's just that you've got to put a little time into it. There is no quick fix. There's no magic bullet. There's no amount of supplements that are going to save you in this case. You might need some vitamins or minerals, but other than that, it's just basically going back to getting a good routine and tracking what you're doing. 
All right. This has been a long Thanks one. Thanks for tuning for into the health with fix. Me. We got to the podcast point. all about taking I control of your health, honor to be your against host for the health fix, having fun and every day. Hope that you a follow me in my me, next podcast where we start fast? to talk a little bit more so, about I created an evaluation checklist and for you taking to see for more care of your body Plus, and still having fun. I created fun a resource guide to help you slow Thanks down the aging I'm your host Dr. Jenny Kraus. Now. You can find it for free on my website drjkrausnd.com. If you like this podcast, help get the word out to others by liking it and rating it. If you'd like more natural health tips and want to join our Facebook community where I interact daily, click on the Join Group button on our website at drjkrausnd.com.